Welcome to Thunder Nerds. I'm Brian Hinton. And I'm Frederick Philip Von Weiss. And thank you for consuming the Thunder Nerds, a conversation with the people behind the technology that love what they do. And do tech good. good. <laughs> Welcome to the show, everyone. We are doing tech good. Uh, and we want to thank our sponsor helping us do tech good all year long. We have Pantheon.io. If you don't know Pantheon, they provide a platform for WordPress, for Drupal 7, Drupal 8. They provide a, um, a dev test and live remote environment so you can easily push your stuff up and test it before you commit it live. They vet out any kind of security updates so you can make sure everything jives well with what you're doing and you can know that they took the time to make sure that's going to be reliable and not break your site. So check them out at Pantheon.io. Thank you, Pantheon. Brian? Yeah, thank you, Pantheon. And for anyone listening to the show for the first time, or if you know someone who hasn't listened to the show, point them to go subscribe. Um, and if you subscribe, you get to hear about all the wonderful, lovely people we talk to. Our, our guest today is a great example of that. Uh, and it, when you're on YouTube, click the little bell and I'll let you know that, hey, one's available. You can go check it out. And uh, please subscribe on the platform of choice you listen to audio-wise, uh, be it iTunes or what, and leave a review if you enjoy the show. And, and last and before we get to our guests, we're going to be at DevFest Florida coming yep. up this year on November 16th. And we're giving away uh, some tickets. We have two tickets, right, Brian? Yeah, well, yeah. We, we're giving away a free ticket uh, to DevFest. And that's Saturday, November 16th, like uh, Frederick said. And the ticket is a $50 value before the event. But on the day of the event, they're $200 at the door. Um, and all you have to do to win one of the tickets, we also have another one we're giving away. Frederick's going to let you know about that is to uh, at Thunder Nerds and at DevFest Florida and say that you, I want the ticket, which, you know, that, that's easy. Um, and we will choose a random winner live on the show in late October. And, and we uh, got a really cool uh, different version of the contest where you could win a dinner with the speakers the day before. So you get to meet all the speakers, talk to the speakers, have dinner with them on, uh, on DevFest. And then you get a ticket to DevFest. And you could also co-host with us and get to interview all the speakers at DevFest. So pretty cool contest. So for that, I, you want to go to win DevFest now at, um, well, let me give you the first part. So <laughs> thundernerds.io slash win DevFest now. And then we'll, uh, we'll put a link in the show notes. But yeah, another great contest. But oof, all that being said, without <laughs> any further ado, let's go ahead and get to our guest. We have a really special guest today. I'm super excited to talk with him. We have developer, podcaster, Japanese enthusiast, if I could say that word correctly, Dave Ruper. <laughs> Welcome to the show, Dave. How's it going? Hey, thank you for having me. This is, yeah. uh, this is exciting to be here. Uh, this is my second time here on the Thunder Nerds, so I, I appreciate you inviting me back. Yeah, we had you on uh, many moons ago when we just had an audio podcast, so it's it's great to get you on a on the uh, the video level as well. I, I didn't find too many video podcasts about you or, or anything about uh, the nature of what you do on there. So I, I think this is interesting. Yeah, I think, I mean, I have a couple talks online, but, and I was a part of one webinar, which was great. Um, and then my daughter midway through the webinar decided, <laughs> started just shrieking, I don't want to be quiet anymore. Uh, for about 20 minutes and I love that. so it is my kids witching hour right now so we could get it could get pretty special here this yeah episode. i thought i heard so, one a second uh, yeah. ago uh, oh how, yeah how old what do you have i got a six and a four year old so they are oh, nice. you know, prime ages for raging so we're, we're yeah in good i shape. have a i have a four and a half year old so i i feel you there yeah yeah it's uh it's uh a little tornado with arms. It's great. So, wonderful. I, I you know, I I, this reminds me, I saw a tweet from you and uh, you're probably one of the only people that get this. Do you just every once in a while want Daniel Tiger to eat a buttload of peaches and be like, take that, Daniel? <laughs> no, I, I like Daniel Tiger. Love him. Uh, miss him. I, uh, to be honest, we haven't watched Daniel yeah. Tiger in quite a while, but um, I miss that old, old guy. Uh, I will it's say this. Show wholesome show uh yeah. and the theme song slaps man the bass is so awesome in the theme song it 
I, it's just and it's it's good it's a it's good a really show, cool show. I, I if anybody doesn't know daniel that. tiger it's like um mr rogers neighborhood the land and make-believe oh, but it's, yes, it's just it's, it's just the land make-believe and it's all animated and it's uh basically those characters had kids and it's about those kids it's a really cute yeah. show it's and like nice each character or each episode has like a limerick that they teach the kids. So you at any playground in America, you can just go, if you have to go potty, stop and, and go right away. Yeah. And 10 kids will repeat the refrain to you. And it's just, and, and Frederick. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Oh, it's, it's ingrained to me. Sometimes I sing it in my head. I'll, I'll be in a meeting and I'll just look at my phone and I'll look at somebody and go, Hey, see if you have to go potty, stop to go. And I, I get up and walk out, and they're like, I, and there's yeah. like always one person that's like, I get it, I got you. <laughs> yeah, my kids are raging. If you feel so mad that you wanna roar, take a deep breath, let it go. It's so good. Uh, it's, it's, it's a great a, show. It's very wholesome. Oh. You know, it's, it's speaking of shows I, and videos you were on, it was cool to see you on the, uh, well, you know, if it was just for a few minutes on, on the keyframers. Oh yeah. Uh, so we we're at a conference, the artifact comp here in Austin, Texas, uh, my hometown. So I'm very comfortable. Uh, it was a little weird cause it was in a movie theater, the Alamo draft house where I go see my movies. Um, it took a little bit, like, uh, it, it was weird to be there for a conference because you're like, this is where I see fast and furious. So what is, <laughs> I'm a little confused, but like emotionally, but we'll, we'll be okay. And then, um, uh, uh, they were, uh, the keyframers were, were kind of sitting off in the back of a bar and, and I just was walking around looking for somebody and, um, and I saw them and I thought they waved me over, but maybe they didn't, but they were having like their uh, like very first, we just met for the first time ever. And I just had, I didn't so no amazing. idea that was going on, but like we had dinner before. So I was like, Oh, you guys want to hang out more? Okay. And then like I joined them and then like just crashing him. And so I had, I feel bad, but whatever. Well, I mean, that was like, that was ser there was serendipity though. They didn't plan that. If if you didn't know, they they just met by chance because they were both there for for different reasons. You know, I feel bad though because well, I feel bad personally because I feel like I want to be on the keyframers and like <laughs> was that my shot? Was I on it? And now I can't like make CSS with them. I, I'm 100 percent sure that they would totally have you on on like because um, Chris Coyer, yeah. who I do shop talk with, he's did the first one, yeah. He's been yeah, he's been a guest before for like multiple episodes, and then they didn't even ask me. They just. They, <laughs> He sounds so jealous. Well, it's, well, fine, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Karma. But like, if you got this karma is... they were just on your show, so yeah, yeah. Hopefully yeah. they'll pay pay me back because that's like the business. But that no, they <laughs> that I I was like, hey, or whatever. I, it'd be just. I I hope they don't be like, well, Dave's good. He was on on the live show thing, and because I'm not good. I'm not good. I want to be on. <laughs> I want to make CSS right. with them. So, oh well. Anyhow. Yes. And speaking of your show, Shop Talk is the second podcast I started listening to. And when I started listening to podcasts, and I still listen to it, the first one's gone. Uh, I don't know if you remember East Wing. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. I With loved Tim I loved Smith. That show. T. Tim Smith. Yeah. But no, that was a good long, show. And long, long listener. Awesome. Well, thanks for listening. We are uh, heading into 400 episodes, which is like. That's pretty very, cool, man. That's amazing. Yeah. I, yeah, and I, I I feel like the problem we're kind of like facing right now is we're kind of like, oh, are, is this like the ninth season of Cheers? Like, <laughs> like it's, season of, you know, or the last, yeah, our friends, the last, yeah, season yeah, or Scrubs, whatever. Yeah. Like, is this, is it like, are you too far to like jump into the series? Like, are we too far yeah. in, like, for people to jump in, or, or how do you? like make the show accessible, you know, and, and stuff like that. So we've just been kind of like tossing around ideas, but trying to figure that out. But yeah, it's like, like 400 weekly episodes. We did it. That's great. But, um, but yeah, like, what do you, like, I don't know, like, do well, I start at one or do I start at like, yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah. yeah. I mean, I, if it's, it's like, um, I think I heard somebody talking about the same kind of scenario with smashing magazine, where you used to be able oh, to yeah. read an article on smashing magazine uh, you know, eons ago, and it would just explain like, oh, I want to, I don't know, do a border radius. What's the, you know, some really fundamental things you could find there. And now 
it's not so much those fundamentals, but more things like, oh, you know, I want to know how to take Java and make a table and Marketo. And what's the, you know, like what? Like, there, you know, there, it yeah. goes in the weeds sometimes, but you know, that that's the audience. And, you know, you have that audience and you're catering to them. And obviously people are listening. So I think you're, you're all right. You know, you don't have to do like, <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, you guys could always do the thing where like, um, you know, you hand the show over to like uh, 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 Shasha and like uh, the, the David Korshid and be like, yeah, and then take, take over, tap <laughs> it's out. Yours now. <laughs> the mental has been passed. Good I, luck. The hosting bill is a hundred dollars a year. <laughs> and then I, just you know, just code from Jamaica for the rest of your life. You're done. I, I still I know, kind of miss the original uh, opener, but the new okay. one's kind of grown on me with the uh, you know, just build websites thing. But yeah, I miss that banjo. Little, I don't know how to do it, but. Yeah, I like, well, it. I like yeah. it a lot. No, we've been evolving and, and we're um, working with Dan Mall and Dan Mall's like oh. brought in two, uh, two people, uh, Afia and Carrie, and they're kind of working on like redesigning the site. And uh, so that that's maybe still like a work in progress and stuff like that. But uh, they, they we've been working with them and um, just kind of seeing about like refreshing the site and we think maybe it'll time up with like the big 400 but we don't really know but that would be cool um and then you know but maybe it's like how do you just is that enough to like inject fresh blood you know a, a redesign you know well, no you no know. if you if you don't get it timed with the 400 are you gonna just leave it until the 500 Oh, we are the pros of that. We just are. You just find the next significant number, like uh, uh, four, four, four. So yeah, we Ooh, have to yeah, there go we around the horn. Or four, yeah, just, yeah, four, oh, four would probably be a much better. Like, uh, I get it. I you, got you, you that. put up, you put episode four, oh, four on, but you don't actually have anything on the audio. Huge joke. Just, mm -hmm. just. I like this. Perfect. Yeah, I like this. I mean, we won't tell anybody. No, no, no one will know. So just do that. Well, okay. No, this might be that might be the plan, and we'll sell ads for it too. And then <laughs> yeah, totally should. <laughs> and it, it's a long audio file, but like the ads would be where the ads would be. be. So yeah, yeah, yeah it's just ads. empty <laughs> for forty minutes, and then it's like, oh, God, have you heard about Squarespace? Oh, <laughs> oh my God, that would be so great. Oh, oh, oh. Uncle, so that's really funny. <laughs> I love that. That's easy. Please, please do that. Uh, I've what got about, nothing uh, about, to lose. What about, uh, <laughs> um, I don't know, taking on another element as far as making also video? I think people, you know, like yeah. Um, I've all, I've, uh, I don't know without showing my hand too much. Like I would love to get into like Twitch streaming and stuff like that. Similar to what the keyframers <laughs> are doing or, the next ninja. or what uh, ninja basically. <laughs> um, uh, like I, what I do, so I'm a developer at a company and I'm very comfortable with how I make websites. Like I, I make the best ones. And, um, but what I like is, and when I think people would maybe benefit from is, is like kind of like a building together. And I, you know, we yeah. have the just build websites mantra, but I thought like, Oh, just build websites might be like a good show. Like, like, Hey, Chris Coyer, Love what? That. Like, let's build a website like together. I don't know. What do you want to make? I don't know. Let's 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 figure it out. I have these websites we could download and <laughs> like these like repos. And um, I thought that'd be kind of cool because then people could kind of like just show how they think or approach things. Um, Smashing Magazine is kind of doing this in there. Uh, they had a, a comp like a with no slides, like you just coded only or whatever. Um and it was pretty cool. Like Sarah Drasner did this excellent like view Nuxt uh, with animation and transitions and stuff like that presentation. Um, so yeah, I don't know. Maybe that that's something I have a couple other ideas, but I, you know, I don't know. It, it's sort of like what's, you know, level of effort, you know, I'm getting older. Yeah. So, <laughs> you know, so it's like how many, how many, fun credits do i have left i don't know so. fun credits. also you want to you want to spend time with your family and you know I, I know you're a busy guy you also have all these other podcasts that you do too like you obviously really enjoy publishing yeah i mean i think it's like that's what got me on the web right like 
in the nineties. Uh, I think I made my first website in 94 or five, to be honest. Um, and you know, like I'm, it's that thrill of self publishing. So I really like that. And I like that you can do it. You can buy, you know, web space and throw things on it and that's your creation out in the wild. So, yeah, I love the side. I think it's a, I, it's not one I listen to all the time, but it's one that I can just at any point in time and I can jump in and listen. It's like a nice friendly banter about some, some cool game. Something yeah. You're doing. It's yeah. Just great. A side quest. Uh, I started it, uh, with my friend Jan Wang, uh, he's here in Austin. And then we brought in our friend Zach, who also Zach Meyer, who does another podcast called between players. And Zach's actually like the actual <laughs> game journalist. No, we, uh, but he, he like thinks very deeply about it, but Jan and I started it mostly because we were like, Hey, we got all these video games on our steam queue, but no motivation <laughs> yeah. to like get through them. And if you're on steam or whatever, you probably have like, I bet 20 to 30, like, unplayed games just sitting there that you paid five dollars a piece for or whatever so our kind of thing was like you know let's just do a podcast that we can like talk you know like and, and structure it we we decided to structure it like a stand-up you you know you would do like what are you playing what did you play last week or you know what, yeah, did you, yeah. what are you going to play and do you have any blockers and so um i thought that was funny <laughs> a funny yeah. gimmick but it also works to like scope a show down to like a formula you know so um so it was just very much like let's just let's let's have this formula we'll stick to it and then we've slowly gotten into like more you know like what like this the latest show i think it came out today or something it was is about like apple arcade like yeah. Jan downloaded a bunch of apple arcade games and just kind of to see what it was like but then it's like what do we think about the apple arcade i mean Oh, I, I gotta know. check that one out. I'm still not sure what I think about it. I, I played a couple yeah. too, and I was like, because eh. there's like economics, you know. It's it fundamentally changes uh, game development, you know, or or monetization. Like it's five dollars, play all you want, you know, and um, that changes it from like pay five dollars per game, you know, or that changes it from what apple's already changed the game in that like you know angry birds is like oh you want to throw one more bird that's another 22 gems and then that yeah you have to buy a gem pack for 99 cents and so like i i don't think developers like that but do are they gonna like this get paid per minute of play kind of you know i don't know yeah and you're, the show really comes across to as like it, as you wanted to do this just to like play some games and talk about them with your friends. And that, and that's how it is. So like when you listen to it, it's like a bunch of, bunch of people getting together and like passionate about playing games and yeah, it's pretty cool. Well, thanks. Yeah. I mean, yeah, part of my frustration too, is you'd listen, you listen to like Polygon or something and it's like, yeah. it's like God of War just came out today. It's 72 hours long. What do you think of it? You know, <laughs> yeah, and I'm yeah. like, it came out today and you've already played a 72 hour game. How, how does that even work? Yeah. I know they get like yeah. advanced copies, but like, it's just like in my life, just, I don't have 72 hours to play a game. Like what? Yeah. what? I... And, and I, I mean, not to go too deep into this, but I also kind of think that I, like Mario Kart, for instance, came out on the iPhone and I, I've enjoyed playing it, but I've read like, reviews from the Verge and a variety of other sites. And they're all like, really bitter and like angry about it like that doesn't have this or doesn't have that and i mean to me i just it's fun to play mario kart occasionally on my phone i i kind of think it's cool and it they're all like i don't know it's like a hardcore gamer versus you know the casual fun gamer well and it's it's not yeah. for that it's you're yeah. playing a game on your phone just yeah. enjoy that and be happy that you Mario can. Kart finally. Uh, yeah. I well don't listen to the last episode. I played it and oh, I did not did like, it, not but... like it. <laughs> <laughs> but it's it's most for me it was all down to the feeling, you know. Yeah. I didn't feel like I was steering. <laughs> like I just felt like Oh. I was not? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I felt like I was unlocking my phone, I guess, more <laughs> than I was playing Mario Kart. So. No, I think that's fair. Yeah. Did you do you do any consoles? Are you like a uh, Nintendo Switch or anything like switch, that? Switch, got Switch. Um, 
working on Link's Awakening right now. Hopefully going to beat oh, that. Um, that thing looks so nice. You know what game I really good. want is that um, Untitled Goose thing that everybody Oh, yeah, about. it does look fun. I did play that, and it's great. It's You're, you're a jerk goose who walks <laughs> around a lovely English village, and um, yeah. yeah, you just terrorize people. I felt bad because, like, at one point, you, like, <laughs> honk a kid into, like, a phone booth, and I was oh like, oh, <laughs> just yeah. bullied yeah, yeah that, someone said like um oh it, like you get tasks and one task was like to do go, you have to do laundry and it's not like doing laundry you have to steal clothes and then like yeah. put it in a fountain and yeah it's, it sounds so hilarious like it no, looks it, great it's good i mean yeah and then yeah the humans like work against you so it's cool it's like a stealth game in some way too you know like or not so stealth game i guess maybe but yeah it's nice should you should play it so switch is good switch is kind of my primary i have steam games probably never gonna play them uh i have <laughs> i play uh overwatch on the pc uh pretty regularly um and then i i have an xbox technically but it's kind of just the netflix machine right at this point so i don't that know what happens <laughs> yeah so oh well Maybe we could uh, jump into a little bit about what you do. Um, mm-hmm. do. Do you mind talking about like you started a business with your buddies and like, what was it like 2006? Is that right? Yeah. Uh, 2006, seven. Yeah. That, that era. So, um, so in let's, I'll go back to 2006. Um, I was living in Japan and I came back from Japan. And it looks like Frederick, you're in Japan right now. So that's amazing. I am. Uh, <laughs> Ohio goes Imus. <laughs> I didn't even know it is soccer season. That's wonderful. Um, but the no, one. I <laughs> but then I came back from Japan and then I was looking for work and um did not get no one wanted to pay me to speak Japanese. So I uh started doing websites with Trent and Uh, Reagan independently and I worked with Reagan for a real estate company in Phoenix in 2006 and that did not go well so um, so then we were both homeless and unemployed or I think he had a home but anyway I was I was homeless and unemployed (laughs) you were selling real estate but you were homeless well it didn't go so well the real estate in the (laughs) Phoenix in the housing bubble so um, and and so then um I like kind of went to LA actually met my wife uh, uh, and then uh, so that worked out, but then kind of around the same time we started Paravel and that was like work that Trent had coming in and we just kind of would build websites. But I mean, you know, it, it, that's forever in web time, to be honest, like 12 ish years ago. Um, but you know, it was, we started slow. I mean, it was like, Hey, I can pay you for one month. And it's like, that's great. <laughs> you know, <laughs> so then, money, yeah. a paycheck. Yes. Yeah. yeah I, gonna... I like food. Yes, please. Yeah. And then it was like, Hey, I can pay <laughs> us for two months. And I was like, that's amazing. And then, you know, slowly <laughs> we are like, Hey, I think we, our business works. I mean, we said that I think last week we were like, Hey, maybe our business works. So anyway, um, but you, yeah, it's, it's fun. I mean, it's great to work with two people, you know, and love and care about and not just, you know, I mean, not, not, not to make anyone sad or, or anything, but it's like, you know, it, in some ways when you start a business, it, it's like a, a marriage or something like that. Like you're committed to people. And so you're, you know, for all the pluses and minuses that come with that, I mean, we've had awkward drag out fights and stuff like that, you know, but like not fist fights, but just like whatever passive aggressive fights. Um, but like, you know, that, that stuff is just, you know, like that's part of being in a family. And so you just have to like figure that out. And, and, but you know, I, I like that we are kind of committed for long haul together. So there first, you know, I mean, who knows what happens, you know, it's, that's the interesting thing about, websites and then even just starting your own company you don't know i mean you don't know you could be out of business i, I think there was one point where we were just like hey do we have any work next year <laughs> like it was like october okay. we we're like do you have any work lined up and we're like hmm no <laughs> it was like okay cool we should probably do we need a resume <laughs> like you, you're like it was just like do i need to get on linkedin what, what do i do so anyway but 
but it all worked out. But it, it's that thing is when you start your own company, you just kind of sometimes you're just like, I don't let's who knows the future. So that can get tiring, but you know, <laughs> you, but it's you really, right. well, you've, you spent so much time in this, um, in this company. And you, uh, is it fair to say that you really have grown to uh, where you are now because of the, these relationships with your buddies and all the time that you invested in there or, you know, yeah, like, it's, yeah. Okay. I, I, well, I think you get like an exponential return on that is what I'd, probably how I'd phrase it. Just you, you know, I know how my coworkers are going to think like we walk into a meeting with a client, like they know I'm going to say something stupid and then they're going to know how to cover it. <laughs> and you know, <laughs> like, like we, we, you know, we know each other. There's not really surprises after uh, working together 12 years, you know, there's not, you know, there, there may be here and there, but you know, there's not big surprises. And then you just, you, you get comfortable with how you work, you know, each other's skill sets. I think that's like a huge thing. Um, like I know what Trent's good at. I know what Reagan's good at. I know in what areas they're growing. And then through all that, I think I've also realized where I'm not good. And I think that was, you know, I think that's important too. It's like, Oh, if I like just get five minutes of input on, I have a design in my head or an app or whatever, like just send it over to Reagan for five minutes and he'll fix it. Like, it'll be great. It'll go from like a, a 60 to a hundred, you know? And so like that sort of stuff is like uh, kind of phenomenal for like, uh, I don't know that you get that. I, I, cause I have no point of reference really, but I don't know that you get that in a company where, you know, people cycle out every six to months to two years or something like that. So well, I, I, I totally know what you mean because you, you, with certain people that at least I've worked with in the past and I don't, Brian could speak to his own experience, but you get uh, this kind of relationship where, you know, who does what and who you could re, um, uh, lean on for certain tasks. You know, if I have something come in, I could say, Oh, let me pass off to so-and-so because I know they'll get that done for me really quick. And on the same side of the other side of the coin, rather they, they'll, they could do the same. So it's, it's great to have those kinds of relationships. I, I always wonder with people that like yourself that spend uh, a giant amount of time, um, at least in a career wise, a giant amount of time, 12, 12 years plus in one company, do you ever or have you ever had that kind of itch where you're like, you know, I could have worked for Facebook or, you know, I, I could have, you know, I could move back to Japan and do this or, you, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, do you ever have that itch to like go and, somewhere else or try and, something different? And remember, they're listening. <laughs> yeah. And, um... <laughs> and watching. <laughs> you better not answer that, Dave. Uh, no, um, uh, I'm you know, I, I think human nature, right. To, to wonder, Oh, is the grass greener over yeah. there? You know? Yeah. Um, and, 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 you know, and, and uh, sorry to, let me just preface. I, I don't, I don't mean to offend or anybody or, or say that something's better or anything like that. Just, just, you know, human curiosity, as you put it. Yeah. I mean, I think like over the last year, like an experience, like I can like definitely share, um, you know, I was, uh, you know, I, I am like with one company, but we end up, psych you know with through client work you you work with dozens of companies sometimes dozens a year you know so um so i do like get experience in other companies and stuff like that um but you know i think this summer or something like that i was just like how many managers do i have like right now like that that are dming me for information it was like seven eight or nine or ten people like layers of different teams i'm touching and just project managers that get shoved into these teams or whatever. And I just was like, I have like 10 managers. That's ridiculous. No one on this planet should have 10 managers, but that's like just the situation <laughs> I have. And so I think like in my brain, I just was like, started not maybe lusting is the best word. I started lusting over this idea of like, what if I like, you know, it must be so nice to work on one for one company and be on one team, have one manager, you work on one project, you have one Kanban, like, like there's like, man, that seems like serenity. Like just, just not, you know, feeling all this stuff and like having to figure out your damn taxes because you're self-employed, you know, like that would be cool. So, um, 
so it's stuff like that. Like if I were ever like, like, and, and this isn't even in the table, but it, like if I, if like something happens, whatever, all the money falls out of the bank account, that's too bad. Uh, <laughs> I think an opportunity I would be looking for if it wasn't like a, like a senior kind of uh, like principal sort of job, but uh, like principal engineer kind of role. But like, I think I would be more in the like, um, I would just want to be like for a product company that works on one thing. I have one, one project, one manager, one team, one company, you know, like that, you know, one yeah. 401k that's all done for me, you know, or, you know, one, you know, one, whatever one. Yeah. You know, I, I think that would be kind of charming. So, but I probably yeah, but will the never. The flip side it. is that then you might get bored because you, for 12 years, you've been doing this where you have like, a, you know, all these different projects. And then, and then if you were to get into a company where like, wait, you mean I'm still working on that same thing I worked on two months ago? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah, there, there is this thing. I, I think I, I've worked enough enterprise jobs. I know the, like the, the speed of enterprise. Um, but the, uh, the, like I do have, you know, some friends or colleagues who have like gone to Facebook and stuff and, and, you know, hearing their stories, they're like, you know, some people, I think, uh, Tian from Tian and Lax went to Facebook and he just oh, was yeah. like, he, you know, he was like, this is like, after a couple months, you're just like, I don't have the fear of making payroll. This is phenomenal. This is a phenomenal feeling, you know, like of not yeah. having to hit payroll. And so like, you know, there's, there's like real world stress benefits to, to not having that. And so like, yeah, maybe I would actually, that would be really refreshing. <laughs> so, you know, like to not be like, where does money come from? So, yeah. it is weird though, too. Uh, I'm not going to mention the company, but I've talked to, uh, I have some friends that work at some of the big companies and they've mentioned how uh, something as simple as like, like the, the menu, like the navigation menu, like they're, they've iterated on just that for like six months. And it's just, it's just mind boggling to me when, 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 you know, and everywhere that I've worked, it's like, we need that like in a week. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah. I mean, the scale is yeah. mind boggling. I mean, it, it, cause when you come from like small shops or even do it yourself, you know, it, it's, I mean, yeah. yeah, I, I always come down to this. It's like, how long does it take to make a web page? How, how long? Like eight hours, one minute. One week, <laughs> it, it depends. Two months. Depends what you mean by a you know, website. like yeah, it say hello you, on you it. Can and that's some, it. You, you can have something done in a day. Yeah, guaranteed. Yeah. really nice. Well, yeah. that's but that's the thing is like I I I've like lost the ability to know how long it takes to make a website. I mean, like because I can make them pretty fast, but then you like you you like hey, can we make this? Everyone's like, oh, I don't know. Is this approved by legal? Oh, I don't know. You know, and then you're like, oh, yeah, exactly. Boy, this is gonna take definitely- a so. There's definitely a lot of downsides like that, but just to play devil's advocate, there's also a lot of pluses as you referenced the, the one about payroll, but also being able to um, get all the different ideas and pull from all your all the peers and what they think and just have this giant group of people where you could say, hey, what are you doing? Or what do you think about this? Or what project are you working on? Like that's, that's yeah. super um, valuable as well. Hey, Frederick, yeah. quit trying to get him to leave where he's working now. He likes his coworkers. <laughs> I never stay. said that. <laughs> yeah. Not Jeez, for right. hire. You could always you could always sell your company to a big company. <laughs> if Stop you if, no, I am on this front. I am ultra capitalist. You can you can name a price, and <laughs> we could start from there. I, I'm very very open. Dave Rupert LLC is a very pro business. Fun. Yeah, let's uh, say a number. Like, let's start. Just tell me a number, and that's a good 000. place to start. <laughs> we should talk. Okay, let's. I mean, let's. We should. Yeah, we'll we'll have to get well, some lawyers involved. But well, spe- yeah. uh, speaking of uh, Dave Rupert LLC, that the other topic I really want to talk about, and uh, it's kind of something that's perfect based on our last episode with with Paul, which I I will not even attempt to announce his pronounce his Stamatio. last name. Thank you, Stamatio. Uh, Stamatio. Stamatio. Okay. 
I, I, yeah, from hearing that, I can say it, but if I were to try to pronounce it, yeah. Anyway, uh, you have, uh, I love your site. Uh, I love that you post regularly. Um, I love that it's like, uh, like one thing that I really like is the, your about page, for instance. It's not just like, this is, is a blurb about me with a cool picture of me smiling with my thumbs up. And um, it's like your archive of your blog. Um, and it, you know, goes in perfect with what Paul talked about too, how, your site is you like you don't like to really know we could create an ai of of dave uh based on your website (laughs) it's an actual i hope you don't but (laughs) um (laughs) yeah yeah, i'm i think that's the era i probably come from i mean yeah um, i was blogging back in the day you know um and but yeah i you know for my about page it was just like you know i i've done a lot of junk and so i i just want to keep track of it you know like 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 you know i i think it helps too you know it's been interesting because i can like go back and it was like whoa 20 like 13 was pretty productive year or whatever you know and then (laughs) or 2012 was wow amazing like started shop talk and redid the microsoft homepage, wrote for a list of parts that's great and then slowly i started having kids and you just see the activity just (laughs) plummet but then you know it's like oh okay i'm kind of getting back into it but even just like like what do i want to do and you know i could even go back and like years i felt busy and tired and this was too much and so it was just kind of a silly idea to put like my my own personal timeline in a trello but i just was like well this is this works for me i may do something different in the future but yeah. So how do you actually um, do? I'm um, not how. Do you actually look back frequently? Do you like or occasionally? Uh, like occasionally, it's like when did I give this talk? You know, like yeah. like something like that. Like or like we have local meetups here in Austin, Texas. You know, um, Austin JS and Refresh Austin. Um, you know, and and I'm kind of like you know like if I ever were like how many times have I spoken at Austin JS? You know, I, I could actually go back and figure it out. So. Um, I can just do a command F or control F and find it, you know? So like, that's, that's cool. It's some data on your life. You know, I, I also yeah. have a, uh, I, about last year or something, I, I think it was, I started a bookshelf, like, so david.com slash bookshelf. Uh, and I just was like, you know, I just want to keep track of what I read, you know, whatever. I just want to, you know, and I don't want to sign up for Goodreads. Well, the Goodreads is actually a different story. My wife and I were sharing a Kindle account and she reads a lot of YA fiction. And so my like young adult uh, fiction and so like wizards and uh, stuff, dragons and stuff. And so my Goodreads <laughs> account is murdered. Like it's just, you know, I'll get <laughs> people from Facebook will like a book I read and they'll be like, that's amazing. I didn't know you were into Dragon Princess 9000. Oh, no. the Vampire Diaries. Oh, yeah. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I'm just like... <laughs> No, not me. Uh, uh, That's funny. So, uh, so I just started this myself just to kind of keep track. And I, I read like graphic novels and, you know, other... Freelance capitalism. Yeah. I'm, oh, I just, yeah. I just finished that last night. I had to, the audio book. Oh, that was the audio book. Yeah. Yeah. I had four hours left on this audio book in the library app that I have uh, Libby. It was like, uh, you're this expires in 10 hours. And I just was like, oh, they're going to steal it while I'm sleeping. <laughs> so I, I had to stay up last night to listen to an audiobook. I stay up till midnight listening oh, wow. to an audiobook at two X. I just was plowing through it, but it was really good. Really eye opening. Do, uh, do you take notes when you listen to an audiobook, or do you just sit there and like, uh, no, unfortunately I do take notes and it's really oh, hard. Okay. Cause I like to try, you know, it's, I, I like to highlight um, so that re- involves me pausing the audio opening notion, which takes a long time to open. Cause it's not that fast, but <laughs> I love notion. Uh, it's just not fast enough, but then, <laughs> then I'll, I'll like play it and then I'll pause it and then I'll go back and I'll try to like type out what I just heard, you know, like dictate it or whatever. Uh, what it, transcribe it and then i'll go back and rewind and play it again and try to do that a few dozen times uh lately i've just like flip over to notion and i use the voice thing on the ios and i'm like oh, yeah um, I, it's like hey do uh so this is a quote so it, it's not good though because like i'll do this when i'm driving so like oh, i'll have yeah. to like <laughs> i'll have to like pull over to take a note about an audiobook it's ter it's terrible but um <laughs> i don't know so, but 
Yeah. I wish, I think maybe in audible, you can like mark like sections or something. So maybe I need to just start using audible or whatever. Yeah. I think maybe you can book bookmark uh, a I'm pretty sure you can. Yeah. yeah. Um, but so back, back kind of circling back to your website, I'm, I'm curious, uh, it's obviously been a record for you in a way, something you can reference and almost like a, your Doogie Howser uh, scenario, so to speak. Um, do you, have you learned anything uh, in general from just running this for, you know, how many, how many years has it been actually? Well, um, this blog, let me go see, this is why you have it. Yeah, go to the archive. Go and, uh, <laughs> There's um, a website for that. Yeah. Yeah. Basically 2009, uh, been running nice. this and, um, you know, it was uh, kind of just like, you know, I was getting more, you know, 2007, we started Paravel, you know, uh, but it was sort of like, you know, it's, it's getting to the point where I should probably like, you know, I think I, I think I met Jeffrey Zeldman somewhere or something like that. Or, <laughs> I, and I just was like, the only difference between me and this guy is he talks and writes about what he does. I mean, there's a lot different, but, <laughs> the only, but no, that's the only, difference. That's the only difference. You heard it here. That's it. And the hat. The hat. But, <laughs> but I think like, you know, it, it was sort of like eye opening to me, like, like these guys and, and, and women too, they, they blog about what they do and then people like, I guess, attention or whatever, but like, but like, they are known and then they go write books and do conferences. Cause like they've already shared their thinking, you know? Yeah. And, yeah. and for me, it's, this is like not only just a record of what I've done, but a record of my thinking. And uh, I think me and Trent and Reagan have all gotten a lot out of doing that. Um, just, I mean, I want to say even like, this week or last week or somebody brought up some, some some dumb thing where i used intrinsic ratios for the picture element or on the picture element and that like basically um hold on i have kids in here so oh, go for oh, it oh dude no no don't worry about it at all go. honestly that's life tech we don't mind no yeah. no they bring them in they, it's all good they they come in they sneak under my desk <laughs> and hang out they anyway we'll see you anyway uh anyway so uh but it was like intrinsic ratios on a picture element. And somebody was like, has anyone ever done this? Or, you know, Jen Simmons, I think was asking for on behalf of Mozilla or something. It was like, Oh, actually here's a post from like 2017 where I talked about that, you know? So, um, mic drop. Oh, yeah. Well, <laughs> well, <it's>, well, actually, <laughs> yeah. I mean, we shouldn't, uh, I, there is some new, I do see some people on Twitter. They're like, actually, I already talked about that. You know, like when somebody's like, trying to drop a new idea or whatever, a new, <laughs> new thought lead. And then they're like, oh, I already thought about this. I'm the actual thought leader, but don't do that. Uh, but like, <laughs> uh, you know, maybe if yeah. you're like, I had similar thoughts here, but, but yeah. then, you know, but, but your thoughts, I really like that, you know, say something nice. Don't just promote your own. Don't, don't whatever, like douchebag. Yeah, don't piggyback on that. Self-link just, yourself. Yeah. 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 So, but like the, uh, you know, there's, there's still stuff in here, you know, that I just, you know, it's, it's your blog. You can do whatever you want. Like I've tried my hand at like short fiction and, you know, um, you know, sometimes it's just a list of like documentaries I've, I like or whatever. And or, yeah, I like the week know. notes thing a lot. That, week notes. Uh, yeah. It uh, reminds me of back yeah. when that was a common thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, no, it was, that was the normal, you know, back in the day, you know, it, yeah, and, but you're doing uh, it wrong. You need to make people subscribe to get those. Now you do. Now you <laughs> yeah, have to yeah. have a, a little boop. Would you like to uh, <laughs> yeah, subscribe exactly. to my links? Um <laughs> Which maybe I'd be more successful. You know, that's no, the thing, don't right? Do that, like, please. well, no, I know, but like, <laughs> but like, I don't, there's power in a mailing list. Yeah, that's all I'm gonna say. If you're gonna be a West yeah, boss that true. launches a course or something, so like, you yeah. know, like there's there's power in that's in fair. like getting people's inboxes. But I don't. I'm. That's not. I don't want to do that. That's like overhead for me. So I'm not gonna do that. So I think for me, it's just like I'm gonna just whatever i have good thoughts bad thoughts you know the thoughts like you spend all this time in, you're like this is gonna be so amazing it's like two clicks you know so you know it's like you just have to i think the paravel mantra is uh we just kind of realized really early on is just no one gives a shit about what you do so like <laughs> just do it and have fun doing it and and do what you're gonna do because like you know maybe somebody will pay attention and that's 
great and that's a gift but like more or less like you just just put stuff out there and if you like it or don't like it if you hate blogging don't blog if you do like blogging or you have a thought and you just want to share it do it did you are you like spending 20 minutes or 20 no sorry like 20 days like working on this thing and you're just not sure if it's good just post it post your draft whatever yeah. do it i post yeah, typos all the time how do how, how uh, much time at, at like actually what is your before we get into how much time like what's your process do you actually have uh like a, do you have a thought and then just write it down and come back to it later like what do you yeah do? um like if someone uh, wanted to like to pre- preface this like preface this how someone wants to do it what insights would you give them yeah um well so my thing is you know if you have an idea make a draft like whatever it is um you know jekyll has like a drafts folder that's what i use and so i just write markdown uh but lately i've actually not been doing that because that thing got filled up (laughs) but i started i started kanban in notion in in notion because i can use it on my phone but i have a kanban of blog post ideas it's like 40 50 ideas or something like that just half thoughts or whatever um that and you know they always like it doesn't work out, but it, it's just, you know, like uh, last week or something, you know, Microsoft announced new devices, like these dual screen, yeah. the Neo oh, and the yeah. Duo. Those look nice. Well, they're, it's interesting hardware. Like yeah, when, yeah. When, the, when she was like folded up and now it's a little book purse thing. I was like, I want that book purse. Thing. <laughs> like, yeah, I'm going <laughs> to yeah, buy dude. it. I don't, <laughs> I'm probably going to buy that. That looks awesome. Like, um, but like, uh, but like, so this new hardware is coming out and, you know, I was watching this and I was like, like how, I mean, how do you can't just like detect two screens, like your website spanning across two screens. So like, we probably need a media query for that, you know, like, yeah, uh, you know, and so I, I just like started going down like, oh, and how, here's how it, like, anytime you have a hero, right? Like your hero would just get cut in the hat, cut in the middle. Right. And so like, you know, that big, beautiful piece of photography you paid the photographer $2,000 for all of a sudden just has a big (laughs) bezel in the middle of it. So like, that's not going to work. Right. Like, so like, you know what we, I'm not saying like, this is a very like first class, like problem, you know, or first world problem, but like uh, that our devices now have bezels in the middle, but like, it's an interesting, like, like my gears get turning and I'm just like, Oh, how does, how do you do websites on a a split screen, you know, like two screens. And so uh, in, in, you know, right now they're stapled together, right? Like, but maybe it's like a Nintendo DS where there's a a big bezel in between. So maybe like, what's a big bezel life like, you know, or what if, what if like they detach and like you can pass one to a friend or something like what do you, what's web design for that? So you know the gears get turning so it's stuff like that i'll just like dual screen websites blah you know like that's the 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 little card i put in notion on my kanban and then you know I'll, uh, if i'm smart i'll type out like a, a, a note. out outline of like five bullet points or three bullet points or something i'm trying to think about um so that when i go back to it later i can actually mm. expound on it so yeah but if you get like a little outline of it that'd be awesome but you know sometimes it's just a quote or something I heard or, you know, so yeah. So it, I have, yeah, I have, I can pull it up here. But I have a, just a huge list of, of blog posts I want to write. And some are like a series too. Like, like I, I was doing a lot of accessibility work this year. Uh, and I just was like, well, here's like five things. Here's what grinds my gears about accessibility. <laughs> so I have like five posts about accessibility and stuff like that. So it's really just, you know, and those probably will go over like a lead balloon, but you know, it's just stuff like that. Like, I'm just like, here's, here's some thoughts I've had, you know? So yeah. So are you 30, comfortable with your cadence that you're publishing? Uh, I try not to think about it. Um, yeah. I mean, I think it's like 40 posts a year is kind of where I'm at right now. Um, which is a lot. I mean, that's like one a week if you get down to it, but usually it's like, I binge, like, it's like at the beginning of the month, I write like three and then towards the end of the month, I write zero. And then one week <laughs> I'll just write five in a row. Like, like, and, and I gave myself like different formats too. Like I have a link post where it's like, uh, Brad Frost does this a lot too, but it's where like you, or it, Jeremy Keith does it a whole bunch a lot. And so does John Gruber, but it, it's basically like a link to a news line or a headline. And then your thoughts about that, like your response to it. 
Um, that, I mean, Hey, that's like literally like, I don't know. That's turning your hacker news comments into blog posts. Like do that. Like, don't, don't, don't feed that beast. Like, build your own <laughs> brand or whatever like to do your own thing so so once you get the uh, outline um de- like laid out and you have this note in there like how do you circle back to it like what do you do to actually make it into something that you will you know publish yeah i mean it's hard to you know it's it's usually the like the the squeaky wheel gets greased sort of like like i uh, really like the the idea is the the writing a card out or whatever or post it or uh, a draft in your draft folder that's really just to get the idea like documented you know you can come back to it or not don't feel pressure um but then um i kind of have i have like four uh columns in my kanban here <laughs> like just an idea in progress it means like i've sort of started some ideas about it you know mostly done is like hey this is probably ready to pull into like my actual blog and then start honing it down. Um, and then published is like, it's, uh, it's published and out. So I should probably like add another step, like grammar checked or something like that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ran through Grammarly, but I, Grammarly. I don't do that. Yeah. But like, <laughs> um, but you know, it's, you know, I, I think like, yeah, right now I'm looking at uh, four, 51 posts in my Kanban and I know there's more oh, wow. in my like <laughs> oh, yeah, I know there's more in my drafts folder I think I have 10,000 words or something in my you ever think about, folder you ever, you ever think about trying to align a bunch of these topics to the uh, the book to a book yeah well so uh, spoiler uh, oh uh, well, exclusive, no, exclusive. Uh, I, you know, I started like, actually, like I did a talk and stuff like that about prototypes, uh, like, hmm. uh, for a few years, like three or four years looking at my about page, I can tell you it was like three or four, from like 2014, uh, till now, um, talking about prototyping and stuff like that. And I really just like collected a bunch of stories and inspiration from like outside our industry and stuff like that. And, um, I'm minimize visual studio code and watch what happens to my face. That's incredible. Anyway, (laughs) whoa. Okay. Wow. Um, (laughs) But the, uh, uh, so the, the, uh, uh, so I I basically just took all these talks that I gave like three or four talks and I, and I sent them off to get transcribed because I was, you know, and because it's a book on prototyping. So I just said, well, why don't I prototype a book on prototyping? Whoa. Whoa. So it's meta. That's <laughs> yeah. meta inside meta inside a maze of confusion. Yeah. Think about that for a bit, but, uh, but it was just this idea of like, let me get all these talks, transcribe them. They're mostly broken into sections. So I can take the best, like the last version should, should be kind of my anchor. And then I can, you know, fill in pieces like of little sections I cut out to kind of fill out the book. But lo and behold, I have like a 13 chapter book or something about prototyping. And, wow. and I feel like, uh, and I feel two things like it's maybe not the greatest thing, or I maybe need to like make it more webby or, or something like that, but, or fill out some sections really well, or maybe some chapters get combined. But like, for me, I value prototyping very much. And sometimes I wish I could just show up to a company and be like, here's what we think about prototyping. Like, do you, you want this? Like just build prototypes. That's some just title build prototypes. Ooh, yeah. Nice. I like it. But that's, uh, I mean, it's not too wrong. I mean, cause it's yeah. just like, I feel like too often people just start coding in production or like coding against production. And like, now you have a host of problems. You have like a database that you could wipe out. Whoops. You know, like yeah. you have release schedules and stuff like that. So like you, 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 like end up in this like tight cycle of just pain. Cause you're like trying to ship something in production, you know, so much pain. And it, it's like, and, and that it's like, yeah. I, there are like physical and emotional effects of like, like having to like that you bear as a, as a developer, it's not just software code and bits and stuff like that. So like, you know, like you're holding all these issues and now you have all these bugs. Cause like, well, of course you have bugs because no one freaking looked at it like until it was yeah. in, about to hit production, you know, like, like, and so like for me, it, it's like this idea of like, 
focusing on prototypes. Like I would love to like evangelize that a little bit more. Like let's build a prototype. Let's test it. Let's test it with an actual user. Let's test it with a bunch of actual users. Let's test it with blind users and see what they think. You know, like there's like, you can learn, you know, very cheaply now with a bunch of tools like user testing.com or AB testing or whatever. Um, like you can learn a lot before you even commit to putting that in production, you know? So yeah, liberating yourself out of the bubble. Yeah. Like you basically are just like, like a no pressure situation to like innovate, you know, on the website. That's awesome. Like, why don't we do that more? And if you have a design system pre-built, like already built, um, like it's easy. You just cobble together pieces oh, of a easy, pre-existing yeah. thing. Well, <laughs> but like it, it, the speed or like somebody yeah, can you. dictate or like sketch it out. And I, I think uh, Airbnb has this tool, right? Where you like, you sketch yeah. out a prototype and it'll code it for you. Like that's yeah, cool. Yeah, that like, stuff blows my mind. Yeah, that's kind of so amazing. Like, yeah. I mean, so we're in this like kind of new future where that's even possible. You know, you can sketch to prototype, you know? Um, so I, there's, so I, I know that companies do do that, but I've also found they're seen time and time again, like a, a product failure or something like that. Um, or, or just a, like a bad launch or something like that. And I'm just like, you need to go back to prototyping. Like you don't in a prototype is not like, like, Oh, well we, uh, put bootstrap on a thing and it's a piece of crap, but yeah, we're going <laughs> to, we're just going to put it in production, you know, like, like yeah. done. Yeah. It has to go to an actual user. Like it has to like be seen. And, and, you know, I, I, for me, it's, have you ever been in a meeting where like the CEO or whoever, some high level person like puts a, a screenshot of something in, in a PowerPoint and, and they're like, yeah, and we're building this. And you're like, I'm building one now. Like, what, <laughs> yeah, yeah. what is this? What is this monstrosity or whatever? And so like, far too often. Like, right. Like it's not a rare thing where somebody's like, here's our idea for whatever. Yeah. And you're just like, <laughs> we talked about that. Yeah. It's like that, that has <laughs> yellow buttons, like <laughs> like yeah. yellow button. Um, yeah, so my, you're just, yeah. My oh, favorite ahead. thing with that, with that, that happened to me is I did a design uh, and, and it was all grayscale because it was the prototyped wireframe essentially. And then oh, that became actually, the website. Yeah, Dev actually coded it all in grayscale. I was like, good, what are you, good, what? good, what? Good, good, good. <laughs> well, and that's like, yeah. I mean, in in uh, Jared Spool has this excellent quote. He was on Shop Talk, and I, you know, I was grilling him about uh, prototypes and UX and stuff like that, and. Uh, he just was like the fidelity of your prototype should match the fidelity of your thinking. And mm -hmm. that quote obviously has stuck oh, with me well, for years, yeah. but it's just this idea of like, like, how do you know when the prototype's done? Well, are, is your thinking done? Like, does this, does this match your expectations? Is it like, do you need oh. to go back? Like, and, and then like the other piece of that is how quickly, you know, that's, this is like the design sprint, like, uh, who is it Jake Knapp and all that, um, you know, like how quickly can you get to that idea or manifest that idea in some form? And so there's a balance there. Right. But then like, but you need to iterate and it needs to match your thinking. And so, um, and then, it, you know, it also too needs to match the business value, you know, like you can't spend like whatever, eight years prototyping the about page, you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> like, like, <laughs> maybe the homepage, but like not the about page, you know? So like you have to like the, the scope or, or the, you know, and, and like you need to have hierarchy, I guess, in, in your, like your objectives. So that's, a, yeah. That's so a, that's amazing. That quote is amazing. So you, it's just yeah. build prototypes is going to be the title of his book. And the, the quote will be the fidelity of your prototype should match the fidelity of your thinking. That'll be inside the book uh, underneath how much he loves his family, of course. And, and, I, yeah. and I love how like, when <laughs> yeah. you're, uh, yeah. is your thinking done? Well, yeah, that's amazing. There you go. Yeah, I love that quote. Yeah, cool. yeah. I mean, it just, I think it summed it up nicely. And, yeah. you know, I've qu collected all these quotes and all these stories. Like, like I, I play Overwatch. It's a big Blizzard Activision yeah. game. Um, you know, and when they launch a new character, they kind of did this behind the scenes of this one character. And it, you can stop me if this is going too long. But, um, <laughs> but they, uh, you know, and, and the Jeff Kaplan, the, the like director of, pro of Overwatch was like, literally he says like, 
we took this uh, the character model from this one character and we gave her a shield from this other character and then we gave her the gun of this other character and then we like tweak some variables and then we just said is it fun you know and they cobbled together <laughs> these parts and asked themselves is this fun and to me that's the spirit too is like yeah. you cobble together pieces of your design system like pre-existing things you already have smash it together and be like is this fun you know like or and then like from there you can start at you know answering the right questions and even I got more video game stories. Zelda comes in like the, the original, like, uh, like, uh, or Zelda breath of the wild came out, um, mm -hmm. for the switch. It's a massive 3d game. Uh, but how it started out, they did a 2d like retro Zelda prototype. And the, the mm -hmm. idea they were testing was, um, you know, Zelda has swords and stuff like that, but yeah. they wanted to test this idea of a chemistry engine. Like most games have a physics engine, like ball drops, rolls, you know, um, or like, you know, you hit something, it goes backwards, you know, stuff, stuff like that. Uh, you jump, jumping is physics, I guess, but um, they wanted to test a chemistry engine where if you, you come across wood with fire and touch the wood to the fire, <laughs> fire to the wood, oh, what should wow. happen? Like yeah, it should the have wood burned. That's fire. amazing. Yeah. yeah. Or you do ice to water, it should freeze, or anything should freeze. Um, you know, they the electricity to metal is worse than electricity to wood, you know, stuff like that. So they, you know, most games have this physics engine, but they kind of did like a Minecraft kind of like chemistry engine, is what they're calling it. So they prototyped it out in with 2D wow. assets, like in an old Zelda world. And they again they were like is this fun was kind of their big and they have this word tego tie which is hand response like like when you move does it you know spark joy or whatever you know does it, <laughs> it does like yeah. yeah does it like does it like feel right you know and they kind of go for the feeling yeah. big time but they uh um but then one thing the director of that game said was once we showed this prototype off and people were like yeah this is you know this is fun. The sparks joy. He said, then from there, we had an understanding of what like we needed to do, like, and how much work it was going to be. So the prototype, not only, it wasn't just like, Hey, how do we like make this and like, okay, MVP, let's ship it. You know, it was like, all right, we made this. Okay. Now we understand what we need to do. Like now we understand the problem and the goal and the everything like, and that's what I think prototypes unlock where, and, and I don't mean just like, you know, kind of half-assing it, you know, it, it's like, you got to really like embrace prototypes as part of the process. You can't just, but again, like to the level, like for the about page, I mean, prototype it, but don't spend that much time on it, you know, <laughs> like, like to, to the right degree, like, like figure it out, but maybe you're trying to conceptualize a whole super javascripty homepage experience you know prototype that but like but then you have to the challenge is like figuring out how do i scale this idea back to prove just one idea at a time you know because too often you start building the whole javascript homepagey swipey thing uh when when really you just need to prove like okay does this page transition make me want barf if i do it 20 times you know like that's that would be the question yeah. you want to answer <laughs> But, uh, you know, so people start building the whole thing. So anyway, don't think about the basic experience first. Yeah. Yeah. Like did, did this weird JavaScript transition between two pages, did that spark joy? If it did awesome, like, let's go for it. Let's experiment a little bit further. But like, if it just was kind of cruddy and ran at FP, like eight FPS on an old Android, don't do it. Like, <laughs> or you, now, you, now, you know, the problem and you know, you're going to have to bail out of Android. Yeah, so. I could see the I could see the joy of making something really technically amazing and then being like, look at all this cool stuff. But to go back to like, is it worth it? Is it cool? Like, you know, Dream Theater is so technically amazing, but do you really want to listen to Dream Theater? Probably not. Mm -hmm. Yeah, never be the Ingwe Mall steam of of websites, you know. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> Very nice. <laughs> oh yeah guitar tab guitar weekly or whatever he's the king of that 
Well, Dave, we're getting, uh, we're at, we're at the end of the show. Um, two things yeah. we like to ask and possibly three considering, uh, uh, what, you know, you are a, a musical uh, genius over there and you got some stuff. Maybe you might play something for us, but one, uh, what's the best way people could learn more about you? Uh, do you want them to go to your Twitter, your website? Yeah. Uh, you can go to Dave uh, or you can go to, uh, Twitter. I'm on Twitter, unfortunately. What a garbage hole. But yeah, I'm on Twitter at Davatron5000. <laughs> D-A-V-A. There's a Dave Tron 5000. He's a very talented Rubyist, but he's not me. So, Gotcha. Yeah. And, you know, we normally ask people uh, a, a closing thought, but I don't know if you want to even entertain that because you already provided us uh, like mountains of, of those uh, already. So maybe you could play us out. Yeah, play us out. Oh, okay. <laughs> It's a lot of pressure to play on a podcast. <laughs> play on a podcast. Very nice, sir. Very nice. Very nice. Well done. There you go. Dave Rupert Original. Dave, thank you so much for being on the show and sharing with us and uh, playing some music music yeah. with us really really appreciate it man yeah thank y'all for having me really appreciate it and best of luck and on your future episodes maybe i'll come back in another like 200 episodes of show so yeah we'll have you in episode <laughs> yeah, 404 yeah, yeah, exactly. oh yeah it'll just be us those ghosts yeah. <laughs> <laughs> an empty live stream <laughs> exactly and hey, thanks everybody for watching really appreciate yeah, it